Welcome to the GOG Cast, brought to you by Mad Cats, all about the game. An XSplit broadcaster, simple yet powerful, live streaming and recording. And now, your host, Leah. Welcome to another Girls on Games podcast. My name is Leah. This is episode number 81. And we've got a wonderful evening here for you today. Thank you for coming to our Twitch channel or listening via iTunes or YouTube. We really appreciate it. Um, with me today, I've got Miss Catherine Smith DBA. How you doing, girl? I'm good. I'm good. How you doing? I'm good, relaxed after this weekend full of lots of indie game fun. Yeah, yeah. I'm trying to remember all the games we played, but there were so many. I know there was so many. I had to go through business cards. Business it, cards. I, w- I have, was going through my photos, and I was like, I don't remember trying this game. <laughs> oh, it's funny. And with us, we've got the wonderful guests of honor here this evening. This is Dorian and Jim, both from the game developer No CVT, who created. All the wonderful magic that is behind the game Void and Melder that we gave, sorry, Meddler, I'm going to say that wrong. I don't know why I want to say Melder, but it's Void and Meddler. (laughs) And that's the game that at the Montreal Independent Game Festival, we gave the Art Direction Award to. So congrats, guys, and thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting us. (laughs) <laughs> all right this is gonna be awesome so before we get into what everybody's playing i want to know a little bit more about you guys you want to give our audience you know some details about who you are what you do what you like to play go right ahead mm, so i'm dorian i'm french and new in montreal and i'm the game designer for avoid and Mellow. i'm I, we are independent so i did game design level design music pixel art and Lots of stuff. Um, I mean, ah, and I'm uh, Jeremy, or, or Jim, as people like to call me. Uh, I'm a lead artist on, on What in Meddler. I do all the pixel art and uh, all the animations. Uh, I'm a freelance artist, so I've, I've, I've worked on comic books and movies, and I, I do like music for short films and other video games. And uh, yeah, games I've been playing. I don't know. What have you been playing, Dorian? <laughs> um, the last day we play in Mother Russia Bleed, yeah. Yeah, we, we try Mother Russia Bleeds, uh, beat them up, old school. Eh, not too bad. <laughs> it's great and bad in the same time. Yeah. Yes, yeah. <laughs> um, I really like Kentucky Road Zero Act 4. I'm playing last year. It's, I love uh, Kentucky Road Zero. It's, uh, it's like... Yeah, it's like right in our area of, uh, you know, kind of t- the same type of game. We yeah. Really- the ambience and the David Lynch esque feel, vibe to it. Yeah. And uh, I've been playing. Uh, I think it's called Road Death Road to Candor or something. It's like a you know pixel art. Uh, there's a bit of text based adventure in it, but you make your own characters and you you try to survive for like 12 days to get to Canada. So you just like create all your custom characters. So of course I've made myself and all my friends. And you, you put personality traits on them and different stats. So, uh, and then you try to survive. It's, it's really, really ridiculous. And sometimes it's pretty accurate on what you'll get, like what type of events and uh, the personality traits, how it affects the story. Sometimes you're like, I would actually do this in real life. My friend would actually say this. And it's really hilarious. Yeah. <sighs> I've never, is that a Canadian developer? I don't know. I just I just found it like a week ago, and I played like maybe an hour or two, and uh, I took screenshots of all the like the stuff <laughs> that I found funny that was like spot on with me and my friends. Like, what would we? What would? What would? Wow! I can't talk right now. What we would do in that situation? Awesome! I'm gonna have to go check that out, and then I'll end up putting all the members of GOG in it, and we can all survive in the wilderness together. Yeah, most of the time, like I'm the first one to die. Which <laughs> oh is no! What happened? <laughs> <laughs> that's funny that's funny <laughs> cat besides all the games at uh the montreal independent game festival what did you play uh i've been spoiler alert i've been playing forza horizon 3 Ooh, can't talk about it yet 
No, I'm not allowed to say what I think of it, but I've been playing it and I will get some reviews and articles ready. And once it launches, it'll have the play anywhere. So I'll be able to play on my computer. So maybe a stream or two. We'll see, because I don't have an Elgato, so. Hey, that works. I did it with yeah. ReCore, so ReCore, um, which I played uh, almost almost a full week ago now when I streamed it, because it was after this episode, last week. And uh, and yeah, that has to play anywhere as well. And it worked pretty well to set up for the stream. I mean, it's just like playing any other PC game. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so I'm, I'm looking forward to the full release and testing out a few things uh, that are not included in the review copy. And yeah, other than that, um, I got two people in GOG addicted to kleptocats. Oh, uh, there you go. <laughs> because I like to find silly mobile games with cats, and then I found one where it's cats that go out and steal items for you, and they have a lot of nerd culture references, like the first item I got, he brought me back a Triforce magnet for my fridge, and it just said, excuse me, princess. <laughs> so I got people addicted to that. So I'm pretty happy for myself because I think there's room for casual games next to hardcore games. So like I can play Forza and The Witcher for hours while my cats on Kleptocat go fetch me stupid shit. It's perfect. <laughs> it's perfect. Yeah, I, uh, I have been playing the For Honor Closed Alpha, which I'm in love with. Uh, I've been playing SimCity Build It when I've been traveling. And what else? Oh, yeah, I played some more ReCore. And, uh, yeah, it's pretty much it. I mean, it's been a busy week. I'm in the middle of a really big, busy time at work. Um, I'm actually going to be AFK in Vegas again on Thursday until Sunday. So, yeah, crazy stuff coming out of that. It's going to be super busy. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to bring a game on the road. Now I have to pick something. Hmm. Decisions. I don't know. Do I bring my Vita? Do I bring my DS? I don't know. Hard decisions. But yeah, that's what I've been playing. And uh, it's been a pretty good week, though. I mean, I've gotten a solid good few hours in playing video games. But I think it's time to talk about all the news and what's been going on in the world of video games. Um, Dorian and Jim, uh, what consoles do you currently play on? Or are you strictly PC gamers? Uh. And we're both strictly PC. Yeah. Uh, strictly PC? To, yeah, budget, budgetary reasons. <laughs> Sometimes on mobile, but yeah, PC. <laughs> Do you play any uh, Blizzard games? I uh, don't. Yeah, yeah. Not mm -hmm. right now, but yeah, we love them. I, I never played any more any Blizzard game except for like StarCraft 1. There you go. Nothing wrong with StarCraft 1. Well, yeah. if you still have your login, and you don't like your battle tag, now Battle.net is going to let you change your tag for the small fee of $10. Not bad. Because, you know, when you, when you made your Battle.net name back in the day, you know, maybe you made something foolish because you were yeah, a kid. It's probably awful. It's probably terrible. <laughs> I know mine old ones were Soccer Girl something. I'm like, who wants <laughs> that as your Battle.net tag? <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> so yeah, a battle net, they already let you do it at least like one time after your initial, but any time after that, it would cost you 10 bucks to change. Uh, Xbox already has this kind of thing in place. Steam lets you change your name at any time. And PlayStation, of course, as we know, doesn't understand that people like to, or people make mistakes and want to change their names. Kat, do you need to change your battle net tag? Uh, I haven't logged into Battle.net in ages, so, and I've never changed it so that I know, so I have the freebie. Okay, good. There you yeah. go. If I, I'm pretty, like, I'm, I think I started playing WoW when I started using my current tag, which is just my real name, so, fingers crossed. If not, if I log in, if it's my stupid Japanese name, whatever that I used to use as a teenager, I'll be I like, still oh. use that. I still use that. Yeah. I don't mind it. What? We might say yes. That was the voice of God making fun of Cat. I know. It might. It might actually be my tunes name. It might not be Aijutsu. It might just be Athani, which was my t main tunes name. Mm, cool. We'll Man. see if I ever get back into World of Warcraft or Diablo. It was we'll gay see. as fuck. What? 
<laughs> what? You're so foolish. My goodness, we should do a thing at some point and poll everybody uh, and ask on Twitter what their silly old names were on gaming sites and gaming tags and all that kind of stuff when you were kids until you got sensible and wrote something half normal because you were too embarrassed to let them out. Um, <laughs> I don't know if what I have right now is normal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, if you're not embarrassed, it doesn't matter. <laughs> Kat, you've got some details on Death Stranding. Yes, that creepy Kojima game with the hug with hugging the fetus. Yes, that, um, that, that game. Uh, basically, uh, it was TGS in Tokyo, big gaming convention and event and industry event there. Uh, ba, 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 ba. And basically, he said that uh, Death Stranding will come before the Tokyo Olympics. So it looks like a 2018 release for Death Stranding. But their, uh, their Olympics are in 2020, right? Yes, but uh, let me pull the quote. It's because of Akira. Oh, oh yes. my god. He's rop roping his game into Akira? Yes, and that's why I'm getting more and more excited, because Akira is the bomb.com. Uh, it says, uh, Kojima cryptically said that Death Stranding will be out before the Tokyo Olympic Games, which is in 2020, and before the time period set in Akira, which is 2019. <laughs> to go a little further, there is a movie called the uh, Akira, and it will be out before the year which Akira is set. He said at TGS, according to IGN. So logically, 2018 release. And Kojima Production tweeted, "Death Stranding casting is still underway. Will there be a heroine who should play her?" So he's hinting at a female character now. So. Kojima just being like, just giving us the little nuggets for us to be like, yes, yes, let us drink at your fountain of wisdom, Kojima. <laughs> um, so yeah, Death Stranding looks will be like a 2018, maybe 2019-ish release, and there's going to be a check. Cool. Dorian and Jim, were you interested in this game prior? Well, uh, I'll just say that I hope the chick is better dressed than in Metal Gear Solid Five. Hey! <laughs> um, I, I was gonna, I was gonna make that comment, but thank you for making it because I'm usually the one who's just like, "Quiet is half naked." Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, I don't know. It's it, it, the trailer at uh, E3 was definitely interesting with Norman Reedus. Uh, it looked weird, uh, but I don't know much about it other than that. Um, I've been a, a fan on and off of Kojima, uh, depending on how crazy he goes with his stories. <laughs> I, but the idea of like roping in Akira and other events, that's kind of neat, unless it's just, just loose for the fact of like somewhere to tease people and they know what other dates are. And um, I saw a lot of Akira in your game, actually. Was that a reference point? Do you guys like Akira? Yeah, of course. It's yeah. Cyberpunk, it's old school Japanese movie, so yeah, <laughs> because I really love um, Tetsuo, yeah? Do you know Tetsuo movies? No. It's Cat does. Oh. It's no, 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 go ahead. <laughs> yeah, it's a uh, cyberpunk movie from Tsukamoto, and it's really industrial, like cyberpunk, and famous movies for underground movie, yeah. Yeah, the, like there's, there's three of them, and it's it's about a guy that like basically turns into a machine. Mm -hmm. and, uh, the third one, Trent Reznor did the uh, the theme song for. So that's. Okay. Oh my God, Trent Reznor! I love some <laughs> Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Oh my! All right. Also, this weekend we saw the Four uh, Honor Alpha closed Alpha from Thursday until yesterday night, and. I really enjoyed the game. We played a bunch, Bianca and myself, and uh, the most common comment was that it felt like a combination of chivalry and a Souls game, which seems to work quite well for me, who sucks at first-person shooters, because I know how to play third-action games really well. Um, I really enjoyed it. I can see where other people didn't like it, uh, but yeah, it's a closed alpha. They're really just testing the system, so yeah, we'll see how it goes. I mean, I'm intrigued. Kat, did you uh, did you have any inkling to jump in? I knew it's because you're on another assignment that you couldn't. I wanted to try it because uh, usually when there's a genre that I'm not good with, like the like uh, Bloodborne and mm. 
that I forgot the other name. God damn it. That's what happens when Dark, you only have ice cream for Dark, Dark Souls? Dark Souls. Thank you. My brain <laughs> is malnourished. Um, yeah, I can't play them. But usually when Ubisoft takes their spin on it, I don't know, Ubisoft games, I usually I can, I can play. So I'll see. I'll try it. Uh, I missed that alpha just because like with um, uh, MIGF and trying to play a bit of Forza, I, w I also wanted to play more Void and Meddler, so I got that and I played a bit yesterday. So I was just like, oh, fork over on her. Anyway, like you and Bianca were like going full tilt and enjoying it. Yeah. Like, just jump on the stress test or something or the open beta. Uh, I have plenty of time. Like I'm excited for that game, but I feel like I have enough time to try it. So I'm not too worried. Well, you can just tell Pascal that Valentine's Day is going to be spent with Vor Honor. <laughs> that's the launch date! February 14th. It is. It is. Not that we have ever celebrated any Valentine's Day. Yeah, uh, we don't really do it either. <laughs> it's all good. It's, it's like, you want to go out? Why? And pay three times, for, three times the price for dinner? Let's go in two days. Exactly. Let's go, let's go tomorrow to the pharmacy and get half off chocolate. <laughs> That's the real reason we have Valentine's Day. Half off chocolate. On the 15th. <laughs> Guys, did you get a chance to play For Honor at all? I know uh, it was on Xbox. I'm not sure if there was a PC beta or anything like that yet. Are you interested? Uh, yeah, it seems. Yeah, maybe and with a uh, lot of fun, it could be interesting. I I, I'm more pessimistic. <laughs> <As a person. laughs> yeah, you're allowed to be. Yeah, hey, I'm there's, there's got to be lots of games so that, you know, you don't have to love them all. Yeah. Right? I mean, we talked about my hate for Star, Star Fox earlier, Star oh, no. Fox Zero. So, yeah, there you go. There you go. Um, and another game that comes out, or a uh, DLC, actually, to be clear, that comes out tomorrow is Destiny's Rise of Iron, which our whole GOG Discord team is, like, freaking the F out for. So if you want to chat, uh, if you want people to play with all that jazz, you should go to our Discord and, uh, yeah, come hang out and talk Destiny with us. Yay! Catherine, add the link in. We yeah, also here. started a spoiler chat, so if you want to talk de uh, Rise of Iron spoilers without having 8-bit blonde perma ban you from Discord, <laughs> you can that chat. Hey, I just <laughs> want to give a big shout out to Ladies of the Roundtable who are hosting us tonight. Thank you, ladies. Appreciate Thank it. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, ladies. You. Much love. Um, yeah, if you're listening to this post, you know, Twitch broadcast uh we've got the link for our discord up on twitter and it's on the website as well so you can go check that out if you want to talk rise of iron and any other video game stuff we also talk a lot of just random culture geek culture stuff too music movies all that yeah just lots of fun good crew in there i must say shout out to all you guys in the discord channel and last but not least on our news for this week Montreal Independent Game Festival. So, Kat, I'm going to let you roll down everything that happened on Saturday at Dawson College. Right. So, it was the second edition. We went last year. It was in March. This year, it was held again at Dawson, but they had a bigger venue. And even though they got a b bigger venue, it was still packed. There's a lot of people that want to try indie games in Montreal, apparently. So, I'm hoping they're going to go even an even bigger venue because at one point there was one of the alleys like, just like around where like uh stories was it was just at one point where you can pass it was crazy how many people there were uh lots of indie games uh some games that are about to be released some games that are released some games that were like it was their first playable demo uh my highlights were uh naturally void and Lindler. that's why we have these guys here because we actually like the game. Um, I really enjoyed uh, Red Trigger, which is like had a, a portal type feel. Um, I really liked Floor Kids, which was a beat game where you control a b-boy. And uh, with there was music by Kid Koala, and it was just a beautiful game, like really sketched out, but the animation was flawless. Uh, it was just so many games you know what i'll drop in chat for you guys to go see our little roundup um leah and i were invited to judge the art direction uh category we enlisted the help of two of our stream team members uh, stream team members um 
Alison Spaceland and Bianca, who also have a background in arts and VFX to help us, you know, shortlist a few games, get some highlights, and then we went on site and we vetted. Uh, if you want to know why we chose Void and Medler, who was our runner-up, it's all on the site. If you're listening to this on iTunes, just girlsongames.ca in the MTL section. It will probably be still be the first article by the time you listen to this. And I've got photos of all the games, and under the photos you have links to all the games if you're more interested in finding them. And it's beautiful, great uh, indie scene we have here in Montreal. Montreal really thriving and some very high quality games that are coming out uh, that I don't know, like children of the Zodiacs, like that would uh, I if I were a big RPG producer, like I would be like shaking in my panties because that game looks, looks boss. Mm -hmm. looks really boss. It does look really good. Yeah. And a morphine as well. Big shout out oh, to them. Yeah. And yeah. our runner up, which was in the shadows who managed to take light like a light mechanic with pixel art how i don't know it's like mad skills i can't do pixel art now and just normal without a like mechanic involved like come on oh my god so pretty so pretty um but yeah it was a great weekend and it's so nice to get out and see i love it do you guys uh and you guys are there. Oh, my internet connection is unstable, says Zoom. Oh, that's wonderful. Um, you guys are obviously in the indie scene. How do you find it? And especially you, Dorian, where you come from France, is it very different here in Montreal compared to uh, across the pond? Yeah, because I lived in Lyon. It's a small city. So yeah, there are a lot of studio in Montreal. Um, a lot of variety. They are not... Uh, it is not uh, everybody wants to do a platformer like in France. <laughs> so yeah, <laughs> it's, it was really great. A lot of big games indie, but really big for me. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> what do you say? <laughs> <laughs> Jim, uh, how long have you been in Montreal? Because you're originally from Gatineau. I know you and Kat had the Gatineau connection. Yeah, woohoo. <laughs> 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 I have uh, been here for about two years. Okay, were you developing games when you were living in Gatna? Uh, no, I was uh, working on movies. I was uh, going to California every year um, to work on movies with my friends over there. Wow. And, uh, I was doing music, uh, mostly. And then I met him at an event. Because uh, my roommate uh, makes video games. He worked at Ubisoft. So I would go to events with him. I was doing music for his game. And then we met just... We had the same band shirt. Well, not the same band shirt, but a band that we both like. Uh, what band? Oh, you got a cool band shirt. I got a cool band shirt. Let's be best friends. <laughs> and we started Love that. Together. <laughs> what band was it that brought you together? Uh, he had a Atari Teenage Riot shirt. Yeah. Okay, cool. Atari Chanel shirt. Awesome. The Very connection good. over music, and then you end up making beautiful, beautiful games. Exactly. Love it. Love it. All right, guys, give us a rundown now on Void and Meddler. I want to know, give, give your one-minute pitch, because for the folks listening in chat, it might be their first uh, chance to hear about the game, except for us tweeting about it all weekend. Yeah. You want to do it? Or no. Do it. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so Void and Meddler is a... Uh, Adventure point and click game uh, in a cyberpunk universe. Uh, you play a character that has lost her memories uh, two years ago. And instead of um, trying to find out who she was, she wants to be a new person. So uh, it's a surreal universe and memories in that universe are tangible, are artificial and are attached to objects. So you just go around collecting and solving puzzles, finding objects, finding strong memories that you want to absorb basically to create this new person. Uh, so you pick and choose. Uh, and you go around the world solving these puzzles in uh, various ways with various consequences. Uh, so different paths are unlockable and uh, different endings. Uh, so that's, yeah, that's about it. Yeah, yeah it's great. But it's uh, inspired by the films of like David Lynch, David Cronenberg. So it's very surreal, dark, a lot of dark humor. Uh, we don't so take ourselves Zoe. seriously. Yes, exactly. And Akira, like we said earlier. Mm -hmm. and, and, yeah, Bill Kadic is a big one. And uh, Woody Allenson. Yeah. <laughs> you were too much. Greg Araki. Yeah. You can totally see the Japanese influence in it. 
I, I'm with you there. Um, so how long have you guys been working on Void? Um, two years? Yeah, yeah two about years. two years. Okay, and you have one episode out to date, another episode coming very soon. Yes. Yeah. Was it on purpose that you wanted to do this episodic style rather than the full game all at once? Um, it was because I really like uh, this um, adventure episodic game because you have to play it one week, a weekend, I don't know, but you found the... Uh, I don't know the... How to explain mm, just, that? Just say it in French. Is yeah, say it in French. We'll translate. <laughs> yeah, tu, yeah. Quand tu, tu retrouves le jeu un mois plus tard, deux mois, quatre mois plus tard, et tu, tu reprends plaisir à rejouer. Tu l'oublies pas en fait. C'est ça qui me plaît. Yeah, so yeah, you just you can play the game fast and you can replay it months later, and you're always discovering it again, and it's fun that way. Also, I think uh, for me, the way I see it is the uh, episodic game kind of helps you build a fan base. Because it's like a TV show or like a Netflix show, you know, you yeah. want to see the next season and you know it's coming. It's not something that, oh, we'll announce this. Oh, we're working on a sequel, surprise. No, it's actually like a story that keeps going and going. You want to find out what happens. Do you have a set number of episodes in mind? Uh, yeah, it's three episodes. Three episodes total? Yeah. Cool. Uh, I want to get into the reason why we had chosen you guys as the winner of the Art Direction Award. I'm going to give it off to Catherine so she can start to ask you guys questions on your reasoning behind all of this. Yes. So um, we saw we saw a very 80s style. You have the banding. The colors are a bit uh, are a bit like off, like an offset print that's not great, or it's like a bad a badly calibrated VCR mixed with that film noir, that old school anime. And then there's a bit of, there's pixel art and there's realism and those saturated colors. It's basically like a bunch of things that don't match and you kind of like meshed it together. So are those, oh, did you just pick and choose stuff that you liked or did you have that aesthetic in mind or did you just kind of like build it as you went and kind of like made it work that way? Yeah. <laughs> it's, it's a mix because um, I really like to work uh, with my instinct yeah so um, we try to do pixel art because we want to uh, I don't know how to say that um, tu peux dire en yeah <laughs> c'est plus simple de um, travailler à la base pour mon pixel art puis j'aime le pixel art puis on voulait faire un mélange de pas simplement le pixel art basique, on voulait vraiment mélanger plusieurs choses. Du coup, c'était l'idée d'avoir une sorte de distance avec le décor, tous ces personnages, mais qui soient en même temps bien mixés, que ce ne soit pas juste planté sur un décor. Donc, c'était un peu ça l'idée au tout début, puis euh, voir si ça marchait à l'instant surtout. On a, on a testé plein de choses pour voir si ça marcherait ou pas. Et puis, on, a été, on était satisfaits, je trouve. Yeah. Enfin, nous, ça, ça nous plaisait bien. Oui, pour moi, le thème de like, trouver uh, oneself et ne pas fitting dans le monde, you know, uh, the art kind of tells that story because the characters are all pixel art and the background's really like realistic and sometimes out of focus. Like, you know, there's a lot of blur everywhere, little flashy lights. So it kind of creates this disconnect between the person and the world they live in. That's like the pretentious answer. <laughs> so you start with pixel art, you get to a point where you're like, okay, we need to push this. And then you start throwing other things into the mix. Was there any style that you tried that didn't work out and you just let it be? Or did, was it just like a happy accident all the time? It ended up turning into gorgeousness. I think it was, yeah, we, we tried a few things, but uh, it was always like really close to what the end product is. So we never really abandoned any idea or uh, yeah. we just, there's some concepts that we like go up like crazy, like, oh, we should do characters like this. Uh, maybe not. It's too it's too insane or and there's a really really thin line where where we don't want to be like like you know we're in the cyberpunk world and we don't want to be like cliche cyberpunk or you know so since that's hard sometimes mm -hmm. yeah sometimes but if we like it okay it's great we like it so it will be great in the game but sometimes yeah we want to not be too much cliche, but sometimes it's cliche and it's okay. Yeah, yeah you just accept it. Yeah. <laughs> like a you know, pop song or something. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> Catherine's and my breaking point for a lot of the games when we were reviewing them was their use of typography. Now, Catherine and I both come from strong graphic design backgrounds, and that's one thing that you guys really had on point. Not only was it just in the title, um, but also with the neon effect, of course, but also in the menu and the uh, typography used because it is really type based. And the font that you chose was super legible and also made sense because uh, it almost had like that. Uh, it wasn't pixel style type, but it was close enough that you got the reference. Did you, were you guys super particular about what you were using for the text to the typography in the game? Or was it another thing where you just put something in and matched out? Uh, I'm, yeah, I wanted something really classic, <laughs> but in the same time, very, uh, ça, ça soit bien lisible à l'écran, en fait. Et, uh, mm -hmm. Easy to see on the screen, yeah, totally, easy to read. Mm. J'ai quand même cherché plusieurs fonts, là, pour voir si ça marchait bien, ce que je recherchais avant de trouver quelque chose qui me plaisait, ouais. no. so Just a quick translate, um... Dorian went through and checked uh, a bunch of different fonts just to uh, make sure what he liked best and was uh, most readable and legible. And uh, what was the name of the font that you ended up going with? Because I love it and I'm just kind of a nerd for that kind of stuff. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> uh, what's the name? What's the name of the <laughs> Don't remember? Don't remember? All right, I'll, I'll hit you up for that later because I like that tech base. <laughs> uh, one thing I noticed when playing the game, because I did end up down downloading it on Saturday night and played uh, Saturday and yesterday, is the pacing. Um, it's it's slow, but it doesn't... F it, I don't, I don't know how to explain it. It's not slow in the aggravating sense. It looks slow. It's slower in the pensive sense. Was that intentional? Because I noticed when walking through areas, you're really given time to admire all the stuff on screen as you your character walks through. Well, yeah, um, we we wanted like the ambience, the atmosphere to really uh, get you in and and really like show that world how it is and how it feels to be there. Uh, of course, that's something it's hard to do, and you know we're just an indie team, but. Uh, we did our best to give out that atmosphere. I think we kind of succeeded in that way. It, it's definitely a slower pace, like the influential, the influential people we name in their movies or anything they did. They're, it's all like based, in, you know, very slow paced, uh, slow burn type movies. And you want the big reveal at the end. It kind of gets crazy. There's a buildup. Um, yeah. So intentional. Yeah. Very cool. And how about the music? You guys wrote all the music? Uh, yeah, me and my uh, partner in France, yeah. And maybe with Jim uh, in the yeah, future. Yeah, I, I didn't work on it that time, but <laughs> maybe in the future. That's cool. That's cool. Uh, yeah. And the soundtrack is also available to download, correct? In yeah. Steam? On Steam. Really awesome. On Sweet. Yeah, you guys should all go check that out. Also, for those folks who are in the chat right now, if you have any question for Dorian and Jim, just throw it in the Twitch chat and we'll make sure they get it. I'm sure they'll answer any question when it comes to the game, but also just, you know, being an indie dev and working in the city of Montreal and what it's like. Uh, Kat, I'll throw it back to you again to ask a question. Uh, yeah, so you said it was going to be a slow burn movie. A slow burn uh, a slow burn yeah. like those movies um is it is it a bit like uh the journey is more important than the end result without spoiling it like <laughs> is the journey more important than that big reveal because one of my favorite animes is uh samurai champloo and it's basically all about the journey and it just you know it just ends they just like bye and they go away and it's just for me that was my first experience with an anti ending if you can put it that way yeah it's like philip kadek or yeah for me it's the journey is most important yeah even though the ending is going to have a big impact on who you are as a person since it's all about that i feel like you know going through life it's all like what you do with your life and how you live it it's not like how you you know end up dying really that matters it's kind of the same thing so yeah journey all the way but will there be multiple endings? Yeah, there is four of them. Ooh. So how you play all three episodes has a big impact. Exactly. Yeah. Each episode like bleeds into the next one. Uh, so like all the way, like if you played the, the first episode, all the choices you've made, 
uh, will impact the second one and the third one. Each yeah, each chapter. And mm -hmm. we'll offer, like, people who haven't played the first one and get the second one, uh, we'll offer a way to just, like, to start somewhere specific with, like, different actions. Like, let's say there's an easy way, a hard way, you know, a normal way, hard way. Well, you can choose, like, oh, I'll start this game if, as if I would have ended the, the last episode on an easy way. Cool. Is this your guys' first game? Yeah. And what made you want to jump into the video game development? Uh, well, Dorian, I guess have you studied? Is that correct? Um, not no. really. Mm -hmm. but yeah. Um, <laughs> well, you, you, you study in music. Um, you study music? Okay, then uh, why, why go to video game design? It's so different of a medium. Yeah. Because I was tired of music. <laughs> That's a good reason. And, I mean, uh, the music life is hard. I don't know if the, the game dev life is pretty hard, too. I mean, it's long yeah. hours. Hurry up and wait. And coding, coding, coding for that one big bang when it goes live on Steam. Everything is hard, but when you like it, it's okay. <laughs> exactly. That's the truth. <laughs> so, yeah, I would like to make games right now in the future because you can make music, write uh, something interesting for the narrative, um, make uh, art. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, it's very interesting for me because I can't. Uh, on, on la musique, je suis un peu trop oppressé par le faire la musique là, donc. Uh, <laughs> je yeah, sais. He gets too stressed out when he's just working on music and. Yeah. And like it's just a way to vent, basically making a game and telling a story. Yeah, yeah, totally. And um, how did you get into the process then? Because obviously you got to learn to code and all that kind of stuff. What uh, engine are you using or what are you using to build the game? Uh, we use uh, Unity. Yeah. Unity. And did you find it easy to, to learn? Uh, yeah. <laughs> uh, we are using a plugin to make point and click, so it's like we are coding, but not like uh, by uh, like a professional. Yeah. Does it feel like constructing a storyboard of a movie, but instead you have different branches instead of one solid branch? Yeah, it's like that. That's yeah. pretty cool. That's pretty cool. And uh, so you've got another episode coming really soon. Do you guys have a hard date on that yet, or is it loose? <laughs> we don't want to say, but yeah, it's supposed uh, we've delayed a few times and uh, to uh, due to a lot of crazy reasons. Uh, all real though, no no excuses, and uh, and yeah, we hope to release it in October if everything goes well. Uh, it's going well right now, so there's unless like you know my house explodes. <laughs> <laughs> don't 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 even go there don't even go there uh but this gives all the folks that are listening who hadn't gotten a chance to try the game yet to get uh episode one under their belt uh and then uh, the third episode you expect to get before christmas after christmas uh after, definitely after christmas after christmas yeah that's cool that's cool and then what do you plan on doing next building another game uh well, <laughs> we, <laughs> we want to make another game, but first we will make a well, we we'll start a band and yeah. uh, you know take we, a break some <laughs> some months. Um, yeah. What kind of music for your band? Oh. We uh, we've been exploring yeah. ideas, but we you know we like electronic stuff and like industrial stuff and ambient music. So I'm all like I, I do movie movie scores. Yeah, he's all the way industrial, so we'll see like how this blends together. And uh, hopefully it'll create create something unique, and uh, you maybe, know something. Yeah. Maybe not. I yeah, maybe know. not. You know, no. It's hard to be unique these days. Everything's been done before. Uh, hey, it's all about taking a good idea and making it better. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. <laughs> we have a question from chat. So Sun Brozak would like to know. I'd be curious to know how the devs approach promoting their game and standing out amongst the crowd, with how competitive the indie scene is these days. These days, learn to talk. Yeah. Il y a beaucoup de jeux. Comment est-ce qu'on fait pour voir votre jeu? Basically. Well, yeah, we're not marketing guys. 
although I was a, a UX designer for quite some years. <laughs> uh, um, well, you know, we did a social media route and we have a publisher, Miko, that helps us like get events and stuff. But, you know, we go to every small like game dev event, like uh, at, at the Montreal Gaming Society. And uh, we'll meet people there, we'll show off for games at these events and then we get contacts. And then hopefully this gets us other events or, you know, like, like uh, the Montreal uh, Independent Game Festival last weekend. Uh, and hopefully that gets, gets us exposure, but you know, it's, it's yeah. hard to maintain social, social media and, you know, try to get a fan base. You have to be out there all the time. I'm not, I'm not the best at it. He's better than me. I think at it. Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. How many, how many events like Montreal, uh, independent game festival, do you guys say you attend in a year? Oh my God. A well, lot. Uh, yeah, this year has been a lot, uh, but like we go to a small, just like not really like events, just meetups and stuff. Okay. People, and there's like gameplay space that mm -hmm. we went a few times, but we we try to go, but then we have to work on the game. So sometimes we just we hope to go, and then we don't. We don't. Uh, but yeah, you gotta get yourself out there the best way possible, like as much as you can, and try to meet people. I think that's true. That. Uh, that sits true with any business, any venture, any artistic venture, be it movies or you know uh, just illustrations or anything music. You just have to get out there and make contacts and try to sell your game and not be an asshole to anyone. <laughs> you know what? People people don't put into account how important that is to just smile, say thank you, and shake someone's hand. Yeah, and you, you have to be genuine. Like a lot of people, just you can tell they just want you to buy their games and they don't really want to meet you. Uh, and that, I think that can, well, it, it can certainly work in some situations, but you know when someone's being genuine and they're actually interested in your game and you as a person. Mm. So at the event this weekend, was there any games that piqued your interest that you want to go check out or you thought were really inspirational? Uh, yeah, Animal Film, it seems really great. Mm -hmm. um, uh, uh, yeah, all the bunnies, uh, which is our friends, uh, Qubit Games, uh, Qubit Games. Uh, these guys are great, and we we've met them at uh, a lot of different events, and they're always like next to us, like coincidentally, and uh, they they sell our game to everyone, and we sell theirs, and uh, you know, it's a great game. It's not like a, a version of nepotism or something. <laughs> no, it is really good. We uh, played it. Uh, oh, geez, um, it just came out. I think yeah. wasn't it Catherine? Yeah, I think we actually they actually sent us a demo and we played a, a demo. We didn't That's even awesome. have the full game and we were playing it and they were in chat with us. They're such great guys. They're oh, so great. love it. They're That's awesome. Stuff. It's fine. Oh, they're great. Uh, other than that, and Zero that was there, uh, which have been I, I saw a year ago and I've been wanting to try because like the music composer on there they got two of them, but one of them is like. A big inspiration for me so mm -hmm. oh shit that guy that guy's working on it now i have to i have to buy it when it comes out <laughs> but i played awesome. it it was really fun although pretty hard and yeah, that's about it cool uh for anybody in the indie scene or would like to get in there is there any um tips recommendations things they should do as indie developers yourself that you can like pass on the love and the knowledge I think uh, what I said previously, and also like you gotta motivate yourself. You gotta be on point. You know, you gotta work those hours. You know, eight-hour days simply, you know, don't work. If you, I'll say what Arnold Schwarzenegger says all the time. <laughs> you know, yes, because he's a, a great achiever there, and he would say like, uh, you know, Wait. if you sleep, if you sleep six hours, well, another guy's gonna sleep five and do a lot more work than you're doing. So, you know, that's something to keep in mind if you want to succeed in this business. Uh, that's how he became the governor. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Who yeah. ironically now reps mobile games. True! Full circle! Uh, <laughs> mobile strike, what? Yeah, I unfollowed him because of that. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing else but the fact that he worked on Mobile Strike. That's funny. No, it's just the ads were so like in your face all the time. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> Sweet. I'll take this uh, last chat to ask in chat if anybody else has any questions. Kat, do you have a last question before we uh, roll out? Uh, yeah, you were talking about uh, forming a band. So right off the bat, what are your biggest inspiration, your favorite bands? Let's talk music instead of games. Music, make me discover bands. Let's go. Uh, we love music. Yeah, we, we got Carrie. like subscriptions so we can get all the music. <laughs> uh, I've always been a Trent Reznor fan, so like anything that he does, his, his movie scores now uh, with Atticus Ross. Um, but like I'm a big movie score fan, so I, I, you know, old school John Carpenter, his films and his music. Uh, Alessandro Cortini. Who's also been with Nine Inch Nails, but it's just a he's just a great does great ambient music. Um, and the Soft Moon is one I like a lot. Uh, Black Queen, a lot of uh, like you know industrial ambient synth music. It's usually what I stick for. And in, in, in games, usually like you know we'll go with the classic Nintendo games like Zelda and, and Metroid. That, amazing scores and I, I i still have like all the like the 25th anniversary uh album from zelda that i listen to all the time and usually when i take a plane that's what i'll listen to in, in case i die i want to listen to zelda music before i do <laughs> <laughs> oh my you should put that into your will so that they play zelda music exactly there you go <laughs> how about you dorian same kind of music uh yeah I'm a big fan of Nick Cave. Um, what Fetus is industrial old school band. Um, I don't know a lot of bands, so uh, this day I'm listening Lorne and uh, Swans. Uh, post punk. Yeah, post yeah. punk band, yeah. It's really great. Awesome. Awesome. Well, I think that pretty much wraps up our show before I get the guys to reel off their social media so you, all you folks can go and check out what they're doing and go buy void and meddler so that you can play it yourself and see what all the hype is about and why Catherine and i are crushing um but before we do all that i want to give you guys a little heads up if you need some awesome hosting for your website fun io our wonderful sponsor does a great job of vps hosting our website girls on games.ca is run on their platform um stream schedule what's going on this week in the streaming world of girls on games we get Catless tomorrow she's playing some ratchet and clank i believe that's alice on wednesday with some rise of iron because the hype is real Thursday, I don't know what Simon put there. Simon, what is that frog? I'm playing Dang Souls 3. Dang Souls 3? <laughs> yeah. I get it no. now. I understand I now. Okay. I kind of small. <laughs> Foolish. He's so Shut up. No, but I'm getting ready for um, the uh, DLC coming out. I think it's October. So. Oh, sweet. Yes. There you go, Dark Souls 3. And Miss Bianca is going to be playing Final Fantasy X on Friday. So all of that happens at the 8 o'clock hour. You can come back here and check it out. Um, we've got some cool stuff up on the website right now. We've got a review for Deus Ex Mankind Divided. We've got a review for WoW Legion. Interviews with actor, stuntwoman Charlene Royer. And with Teresa Gaffney of uh, Collegiate Star League, which is really cool. You should go check all that out on girlsongames.ca. And... Uh, I think that's about it. So, Dorian, Jim, thank you. We really appreciate it. We love what you're doing. Keep it up. Uh, if you want to learn more about No CVT and the boys, guys, you want to let everybody know your social media handles and where they can check out Void and Meddler? Uh, well, uh, <laughs> we're on Twitter at uh, No uh, underscore CVT. Uh, or you can find Dorian at Red City Noise, yeah. and uh, I myself uh, at James Cobra. I think, not sure. <laughs> is, is that is that what it is? And then, you know, that's uh, the names we were talking about before when we were younger. Uh, ah, there you <laughs> go. Okay. Cool. <laughs> uh, yeah, we're on Facebook, and like, and you know our names, and well, you're very friendly people, so we'll we'll add you as a friend, even if we don't know. <laughs> awesome Aww. all the nice people well thank you so much for joining us before we close out Kat you want to tell everybody where they can track you down yeah you can find me C-S-D-E-S-B-I-E-N-S on Twitter, Instagram uh, PSN, Steam 
Nintendo and Xbox One. Uh, follow me on Instagram if you like photos of my cat and of sunsets and of flowers because I'm a basic bitch. And follow me on Twitter if you like more photos of my cats and me retweeting silly shit. Like, I've retweeted something from Cookie Monster today. He posted nice. this cool photo with the laser background. Brilliant. So go see that. It's, it made me happy. It made me warm inside. So, yeah. Yeah, I don't take myself seriously, so go find me. I post stupid shit. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> and you can track me down on Twitter and Instagram at Leah Jewer. All right. And then, of course, if you want to follow everything and learn more about Girls on Games, we're on Twitter, the Girls on Games, Facebook, Instagram, Snapchat, the Gr Girls on Games as well. And, of course, it's on girlsongames.ca. We'll see you all next week. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dorian. Thank you, Jim. Thank you, Kat. It's been awesome. Until next time, see y'all later. Bye. 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 Bye.